Okay, much better. This is all staying in, by the way. It's all what? It's all staying in. Oh, good, good, it should. <laughs> Oops. Um, how was your Sunday? Good, easy so far. And uh, just so people know, Shazia Dean is in Texas. Shazia Pascal. Yeah, yes, I'm in Texas. The lone, the lone state, the lone star state. Um, maybe we should start by just setting this up a bit. I talked to you like at least once a week. And I was like, I was like, instead of uh, burning our conversations on the phone, let's use this for uh, mask consumption so okay. the rest of the world can enjoy uh, acting neuroticism. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Comedian, acting. That's valid, yeah. I, it's always good when we talk and we're able to get out what's on our minds because you're right. It takes another person in the industry to really understand what's going on in our minds or else regular people would just think we're crazy. Maybe we are. How is your 2024 starting off? Crazy. <laughs> really? Are you, are you auditioning? Yes. Yes. I'm auditioning. Yesterday had to be a maid. I'm like, how did I go from like super hot girl to a role for the maid? It just, you know, nothing makes sense, but. Shad, you're still hot. I mean, come on. You're still hot. You're going to um, still go out for hot roles and milf roles now. Yeah, I guess that's, I don't know. I'm not, I know, I don't see those Tharun. I get the maid and then I got like, I had a commercial audition I had to film yesterday. So it's busy, it's busy. But yeah, I went out for a role recently that was pretty cool. It was like playing um, uh, Mother Earth. I just so people know, like we, we've done a lot of work together in movies and web series and stuff. And um, like I've always admired like like what you've done of like, You've always like done your own thing. You've never like tried to chase this path of, oh, I've got to be in LA and and follow this route that everybody else is doing, which oh. I feel like I've done, but nobody really respects that. But I feel like you've done that really well. You've always been on its own trajectory. But we were talking yesterday about asking people for help because in this this line of what we do, you still have to like ask people for favors and stuff. Could you share a little bit about like what you meant by that? I feel like, well, yesterday we were talking about how we have these friends that are in high places within our entertainment industry. And I said, have you ever asked for one of them to like hook you up or work on a project with you? And you were like, no, I said, I haven't either. Yeah. I've never done that. Huge producers. I've no, you know, I've been sitting with big casting directors and I've never asked them to you know to work to collaborate i don't know why i feel uncomfortable asking them and so you and i were sharing that we're both in the same boat however i feel like if you don't ask you don't get so are we missing something like what is there to lose by asking um i guess i feel humiliated by asking for help i mean like if i can't do it on my own then i think I think it's like the Indian way of approaching things. I always feel like we should be able to self-generate this stuff in our own life and like self-manifest this stuff. And if we can't do it, then we don't deserve it or I don't deserve it. But I see people in the industry and tell me if I'm wrong, the people you saw when you were living here in LA, because I know you were in LA for a long time, they have no qualms about asking for help or putting themselves in positions, right? I mean. I can't even tell. I I've known girls in the industry just be like, oh, I'm going to ask so-and-so to help me with a down payment. on." But I'm like, what? Yeah. I mean, I don't, but it worked out. It works for them. I, I don't, it's hard for me too. Yeah, maybe there's a little bit of humiliation there and there's maybe a fear of, rejection or ruining that relationship like what they say no and then I don't have a friend anymore but I don't know I don't know that's it's tough because some of them could have really changed the course of my career if 
you were in a position, would you help others? Like say you were like some A-list star, I'm not saying you're not a star, but say you were like Jennifer Lopez level. Would you go out of your way to help other people? I always help other people to the capacity that I can, right? Like if I was, I think that it's hard too because you and I know that they don't always hold the final say. Like I can be friends with a casting director, but she doesn't hold the final say, right? There's a whole team of producers and directors that have to all agree on it. And so for me, I would help people as much as I can, always. Have you done that in the past? Uh, I I currently now mentor a couple of models that are have moved to LA and I help them. I'm helping them navigate just their headshots, their portfolio, their agents, their managers, their auditions. Sometimes I help them with self tape. So I am actively mentoring these these gals and and I don't charge for it. I'm literally helping. I'm not you know, making money off of it. Look, I think we both made good money modeling. I but I think you made way more money than I did as a as a model. But would you want your kids going into this business? I don't want to talk about your kids, but would you want your family going into this business as a print model and then acting? Um, not in 2023. No. It's changed. Why would I would I help them, you know, 15 years ago when people were making crap ton money? modeling and doing commercials perhaps if i could be there and i could keep some of the ugly away um but where the industry is now no i would i wouldn't want i actually had this conversation with my husband this morning with about my daughters because you know you know stewart's like an amazing golfer right and so we were talking about passing down our gifts and talents to our kids. Like, do we think they have the same gifts that we have? And I said, you know, maybe they, maybe they are good actors. I see it in, in uh, my youngest daughter, but I don't want to push her into that career because it's just getting harder and harder to make the kind of living that, you know, you dream about making as an actor it's uh, it's just gone or those days. And so and so the, so my husband's got both the girls and they're out playing golf right now. <laughs> it's like, let's work on your gift with them. But isn't everything about like kind of just getting to that lucky opportunity? I mean, really, there's so many like models who I who I do back in the day who just got to a certain point so they could get to an acting thing so they can get to another point. You know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, it's all, think... always a ladder. It's not always like a straight up and down ladder, but there is a ladder for sure. You know, I, I used to meet these um these old guy models um on these shoots, and they were like these grizzled people, and they were just kind of doing their own thing on the shoot. You know, like these models are like all bubbly and stuff, and these guys playing like the grandfather or whatever, they'd be like just out of it. And I'd pick their brain and I'd find out these really interesting backstories. I'm sure you have the same experiences. And these guys were like, yeah, I, I modeled in Paris for 20 years. And man, the money was fucking good. Now it's shit. Da, da. And I was like, oh my God, like this is, I was like, I got to get out of this business. <laughs> like just, you see these people, but then you hear like Ashton Kutcher and stuff who were like models. And then they, this is like an unrelatable topic for like audiences, but I'm just saying, this is what it is. But then you see like like the total dynamic of guys who went on to become these A-list stars. So I feel like a lot of it's just a lot of timing, but you have to be able to push yourself to be an actor. You've got to be auditioning, which I think you do. I mean, look, look at your background right now. You could be auditioning for anything right now. Like this you're always, you, always, you, you always come ready though. I always come ready. I always give a hundred percent. Let me tell you, I was totally wrong for that made job yesterday that audition I did but I brought my a game I nailed it but I wouldn't cast me in it because I've also <clears throat> excuse me I've worked on the casting side listen when you when the person walks in and you see the or that when you see their self tape you know right away you know with <laughs> you know if they're just fit the part so that it's like am I gonna watch this and so you know, I don't think I fit what they were looking for. I read the script. I'm like, but I brought my A game. And for me, it's more about showing the casting director that I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing and I always give a hundred percent. So yeah, 
I think that's that's part of a mindset you have to have. So does the the fans of because I know you you have your fans, but like, don't you miss like living the glamour life in LA of like, oh my God, Shazia, you know, here's your paparazzi. Cause I think that's what people think LA's like for a lot of actors and models. Like you don't have that desire at all. I think I'm just in a different phase of life. Um, but you know, I miss like, like right before I left LA, there was this random night that I went out, I was at this hot spot restaurant and next to me was an A-lister that's like huge. Next Ooh. thing you know, we're hanging out. Next thing you know, we're like, he's like, do you guys want to come hear me play? I'm going to this other place. I'm going to be playing the drums and singing. And we ended up being his like VIP guests. And, and like those type of random nights where you're suddenly like you went out to dinner, but you're coming home and you're like, I just hung out with, wait, what just happened? <laughs> like, that was really fun. So those type of random things that, that happened, I think I miss those, but other than that, no, I don't miss the fast paced hamster wheel that is Los Angeles. And that person was Raga, by the way, that you ran Who? into. Raga, some Daisy singer guy. Anyways, it's a bad joke. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying because I, th I think we live in two different planets. But when I talk to you, you're more at peace. You sound like you know, like I don't. But then I also think because you have a family and stuff, you know. Well, yeah. I'm, you know what? I, I feel like I audition more than I was in LA the last few years. There, I audition a ton here because I'm covering more markets. You know, I have got Atlanta, I've got Florida. I'm a Colorado agent, and then I'm doing all of Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm busier, and I think that COVID really changed the way we audition, and self-tapes became more of a norm, which then opened up the industry for me. Because a part of me thought, you know what, I'm going to move to Texas, and I, I think I have to retire. Like, I'm going to be done. What am I going to do in Texas? And then I booked Descendants Sports. So it's like, okay, I don't know. I guess I'm still working. What is Descendants Sports? What is that? Descendants Four. Oh, is that? Oh, I know. That, that's the Disney thing you did. All right. Disney. See, but Tazi, I also think you also have like a very, uh, a very universal look. Like, nobody thinks I'm, I'm Mexican. I mean, really. But you could pass for Latina. Daisy, you you can cross a lot of bridges. Don't you think that has a lot to do with your success? Um, or... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I get cast for a lot of different ethnicities for sure. I want to be cast. I want to represent my culture. You know, I want to show that that Daisy look don't you know we don't all look one way. Well, aren't they saying that like diversity's in right now? I mean, it's not. Oh yeah, that's all. That's it. That's it. I just called a friend of mine and he's like, uh, he's, he used to be a pretty big comic, but like, he kind of just, I don't say faded out, but like, it's just different now. But I was telling him, dude, you were like the Asian Dane Cook back in the day. And I was like, if this was just today, you'd be like huge, but it's just timing. Like everything in life is timing. And I don't want to make this all about showbiz, but like everything in life whether you're a doctor or a lawyer, you know, like when you apply, like certain stars have to align for opportunities to emerge. Yeah. You and being at the right place at the right time and the circumstances all being in your favor. And then you're like, wow, I could just sit back and this thing is going. I think that you and I got into the industry at a time where it was harder. We were like, you know, what about the brown people? Like, why are we not represented in, you know, why does it have to be a specific role written for an Indian person that's so stereotypical and that's what we're cast as? Why can't we just be the person who works at the market? Like, we, we don't work at the mall. We don't, like, where were we out of those shows? And so I think that it was harder for us, but we did pave the way. I mean, you see brown people now in everyday roles on TV. But, you know, back then, even like when I was 25, it was just the excitement of being in the industry, which like, because I think ignorance is bliss, right? Because this was an obviously it's a different market now. And it's going to be different in 10 years from now. Like, who knows what's going to happen 10 years from now? So like we lived in that moment in time. And 
at least you can say that you were part of the forefront of JC's oh, yeah. boards. Well, yeah. I think the COC was ahead of its time. Oh, uh, the web series. Yeah, I guess. But I mean, there's always going to be, you know, Daisy stuff out there. I and mean, do you watch uh, Daisy stuff? Do you watch Bollywood stuff? I have just had a reemergence into Bollywood films. You know, I watched a ton as a child with my family. And then I kind of just steered away. And then I watched this documentary on Netflix called The Romantics. Did you see that? No. All about it's it's, oh my goodness. I just bawled through the whole thing. It's all, about, it's all about Bollywood and Desi cinema, cin, uh, cinema and how far it's come and where it kind of started and who the heavy hitters were and what, and the shift in Bollywood with the movies with, it was just so good. And uh, I started watching Desi movies again recently. So it's, it's been good. With Stu, you already mentioned Stu, so it's fair game now. Your husband, you guys watched the Bollywood documentary together? Yeah, yeah, we did. And now my kids and I are watching Bollywood films. My kids are not, you know, they're half. They don't speak Hindi. Uh, I do. So it's fun for me to watch with them. And they're picking up on words. It's, it's really neat. Uh, now, was it a choice for you not to speak Hindi to your kids growing up? I, 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 I hope this isn't getting too personal. So let me know. I'll back off. With like your family. I, do, I think it's hard when you live in America and you marry some, you know, my husband's from Scotland. He speaks English. Mm. And so it was really hard for me to just speak Hindi or Urdu to them. I wish I would have, but I mean, I do here and there and they know little words, but yeah, it's it's a shame. Well, I'll, I have two nephews that speak Hindi and then all my other nieces and nephews, nobody speaks it. But your parents spoke Hindi to you at home? Only, only. They didn't hmm. speak English to me. So how'd you learn English? Three's Company. <laughs> <laughs> In three's Company. So your first words were like, Jack, get out of the shower or something. Yeah, yeah, it was Larry, yeah. but. No, really. My parents did learn to speak English watching uh, like comedies in the 80s, but I was two when we moved to America. So I kind of learned both languages. I'm hosting on this Indian show right now and and I get so freaked out I'm going to mispronounce the Hindi words. Right. There's nobody I can even talk to because even there's nobody I can really just, just check stuff. So I got to call you now and ask <laughs> am I just saying these words right because I don't want to be on TV mispronouncing the words. Like there's a movie called Dunky, D-U-N-K-I. And I wasn't sure if I was saying that right. Dunky so, or Dunuk? Are you talking about Dunuk? No, no, Dunky. I'm like totally mispronouncing the movie, but I, I checked it with the exec producer of the show. She said I said it right. Okay. Dunky. But, I don't know. I just watched Dunuk, which was really good about the blind boy. It's like, a comedy. <laughs> yeah, it's a comic. I think from a merit from a, a casting standpoint, like you'd be perfect for the for the Daisy roles because you actually have embodied both worlds. But I can see because I, I remember we, we've talked before about your frustrations, and they could be like, "Well, this girl doesn't look Indian enough." Blah blah blah, that whole thing. So you know, I hope you have like a, a reemergence, which sounds like you are in Texas with uh, descendants and stuff. Yeah, but not Daisy girl. You know what I mean. Like I just booked Karina Sanchez in a movie. And then I and then I played Princess Jasmine, who's kind of, you know, iconic. She's not Indian, but she but the the guy who they cast as Aladdin was also Indian. So that was kind of cool. Oh, in the uh the Broadway play, Aladdin? Or the oh the TV show? Descendants four. It's all about the Disney princesses and their children. Okay, I, I have to watch Descendants 4. Is it out yet? I have to watch Descendants 1, 2, and 3. Is it out? Is it out? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I'm not a big uh, Disney guy. So those are those were my kids' favorite movies. So like two years in a row, they dressed up as Descendants characters. So when I booked this, you can imagine the chaos of screaming that was happening in my house. And so when I got to set, the first thing I did the first day is I went up to Fairy Godmother and um, China Ann McLean, and I was like, you guys have to FaceTime my daughters. They're going to lose their minds. And so they FaceTimed them. And these are their favorite stars. 
and their my their phone is ringing from mommy and there's these descendant stars being like Athena Aurora hi so it was pretty epic I would say it's my favorite role I booked simply because of my kids being such huge fans of the of the show of the movies where did you shoot it Atlanta hmm. two weeks in Atlanta that was hard that was hard so you, you might know, could you be like a recurring character for Descendants 5 then? I am Princess Jasmine. You're going to come back. I mean, I hope so. I That's hope huge. so. That's a huge thing. Yeah. Well, it's... I hope, hope it blows up so people watch this more. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. Well, Princess Jasmine is a, now a mom and she has children in the high school, so... That's what the whole series is about is like, it takes Cinderella and Jasmine and, and like all the princesses, Beauty and the Beast, like, but we're all parents now. And so now it's our, the generation beneath us that's, that, the, that are the stars. Do you feel like you would have booked this role if you were living in LA? No. So, I mean, look at Texas then. Like, it's opened up doors for you. I mean, yeah. so I feel like, it's almost like this invisible thread pulling you to Texas to, because we've had this talk about acting and stuff and I'm I'm like, I can't stand it sometimes, but you keep going. Like you've always just kept going like a machine, which I think is the most important quality. Darn, I try and leave it. Every few years I'm like, I'm done. I am but, so done. I don't like, I'm like, always the last I always go to producers it's between me and another person you know it's like Fox is like no we're looking for a show for you and then nothing so I'm like every few years I get actor burnout it's so real and and I'm not gonna lie I'm kind of at actor burnout right now um and it's like I'm like I'm done I can't do this anymore and then somehow some way somebody calls and they're like no but this casting director is looking for you or like when I moved to Texas it was my old acting coach who was like Shazi are you in the woodlands I'm in, or you know where are you I live in Texas like let's let's get you going I was like oh no I'm I'm done I'm retired he's like no no I have an agent that's gonna love you and that's how I ended up booking Descendants yeah well I feel like you've always been working I feel like even even when you say you're gonna quit you've never really stopped which I think is a big part of your success. Maybe. So, I mean, did you tell it to your, to your mentees? I but. do tell them that the journey is hard and that it's the ladder is not, you know, just a vertical ladder and that you got to just keep climbing one foot in front of the other, always do something every day that's for your career or, you know, and for, and, but also fulfills you. Like and what? Um, you know, for me, I like to, I, I can listen to a podcast. I like listening to podcasts that other actors are talking about their journey. So I try and put aside some time that is a dedication towards my creativity and my career, even when I have actor burnout, because actor burnout to me is burnout from not booking, right? It's not that I don't like acting anymore. I love the craft. I love storytelling. I love our industry. When I have burnout, it's because I've just been going at it and auditioning, 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 being put on hold, being put on hold. And then I'm not having that much to show for it in any given amount of time. And so that's when I get burnout. Well, do you miss, I mean, the LA scene? Because I think that's a big part of living in LA is being surrounded by other people in the industry. Right. I mean, that's the whole appeal. You know, when I, I was living in Florida for, for like almost two years and I would tell these young comedians, you know, the big part, the big reason I'm living in L.A. is being around other comedians who are kind of hustling. And that's where you like meet relationships, your currency to move up in the world. Right. I mean, you obviously have a resume behind you, but don't you miss that? Or is that just not even a part of the equation? I do miss I do miss that. Um, there are not as many creatives here. I certainly can't just grab lunch with someone. Recently, though, uh, this gal that was in The Hot Chick with me. What's The Hot Chick? The know. Hot Chick was the Rob Schneider movie I was in. Okay. Do you not remember The Hot Chick? I do remember The Hot Chick, but for people who who don't know. Uh, so you weren't the hot, were you, you weren't, you were like Hot Chick number two or something. 
You weren't. I the, was the princess who makes the earrings. That the oh, that's right. Got. That's right. I think I think you have the, and the princess characters like you've almost I like get the princess. princess. I play some kind of royalty. I don't know. I. It's interesting to like brand yourself and like I've been I did some one of these like classes where they're like you walk in the room and all you're gonna do is introduce yourself like you're gonna do your slate and then everyone in the room has to give their like three words that they think you are have you done one of these exercises probably and it was a branding session um, oh, I think I had done this and I hate I hated I hated it so what do you what was yours. Princess. So I mean, it was so consistent that they were like wealthy wife, royalty, or like snooty wife character. And I was like a trophy like, wife. You're like, we haven't started the exercise yet. All right, can we just? So they said this about you. What, well, the crazy thing is, is you know me, and there's just like a geek living inside of me. Like I'm a nerd. Like I'm silly. I'm goofy. I'm funny. I don't want. I don't know what I, I I don't match. The inside doesn't match. Because people make judgments. That's just how we are. I always wanted to be like a funny comedian, but like nobody ever saw me as fun. I don't know if I'm even funny today, but like people um assume I'm more like an office person. So I can see why people put you in this box. Unless you really get to know Shazia, it's hard to, you know, get that. Yeah. Yeah. It was it's been hard for me to book comedic stuff. Uh, but I feel like this year, like my agents in Atlanta really get that. They really get me. Like, they're like, yeah, she does comedy. And the casting director, because Atlanta was like this new market for me, I was able to come in and be like, okay, I'm going to tell you who I am. Where LA, they've just known me for so long, these casting directors that they like in their yeah. mind, they have an idea of who I am. And so I was able to kind of reinvent myself on the East Coast. And I am getting the quirky, funny, um, comedic roles. And that's that is that has been fun. But like I said, it's been a lot, too. That's a way smaller box. I mean, even thinking now, like Mean Girls or something like like the funny hot girl, like that's that's a way smaller box. And um, in my opinion, and I feel like they. I mean, I can think of like frumpy fat girls or like and two and a half men when Charlie Sheen would be dating like a, a hot, funny model or something. You know what I'm saying? Like that's such a specific type of role, which I know you'd probably kill it, but it's it's so hard to like put those two. For some reason, people just think, oh, you're funny. You've got to look a certain way, you know? Absolutely. Totally. It's like you're Indian. You're playing an Indian role. You got to look a certain way. If you're playing a funny role, you have to look a certain way. Uh, it's uh, it it's been weird, but I do think it's changed. It's changed these last few years. I mean, like COVID did something. I don't know, changed people. Um, Our industry has changed so much in the last four years because I also work on the other side too. You know, like I've never in my career, and like you, we wear many hats, right? Like you're a director, you're a writer, you're an actor, you're a comedian your producer and so I too have worked similarly like I've been a producer I've been a director I've been an actor and I've been an agent and that and a casting I've worked in casting so I think it's important to work all sides because you really get an understanding for the pulse of the industry and you see it differently you don't take things personally you start having this really big perspective of it and it's not all about like you it, you start to see the bigger machine that goes into this and I think that's also important for uh, people to get outside of just what they think they should be doing or what you know all of that and and flex risk it flex it yeah well for me, I have to do it out of necessity. It's not because I really want to do all this. Even like now, I'm like, oh, I got to be shooting stuff. I don't really want to shoot stuff. It's just because you have to. Otherwise, you're going to sink in the water. But it's competitive. But if I was working like non, I think I had this conversation with a friend of mine. Like if you're working in a certain direction, you're just going to move. Like, you know, if I was hired on staff to write for some show, I wouldn't bother with anything else. I'd be like, just put everything into. Because you just want to kill it wherever you 
are getting, for me, I, if I'm getting paid to do something, I want to make sure I just kill it every time. So that way there's no reason not to get rid of me. I see that. Well, I, and I mean, going back to what I said was the industry's changed in four years is now it's like everything's online. And so now you have to have this sudden online presence that when I started out, that was not a thing. I mean, it was, you know. So what's stopping you from doing that? What, having an on online presence? Yeah, and making videos online and stuff. I don't know. I guess it's just time. Uh, dedicating time to it, I suppose, would be. I mean, you could go on OnlyFans and make like a million dollars tomorrow, Shazi. Let's be real. I mean, you could totally do that if you wanted to. Yeah, well. Uh... <laughs> You're like, no. You know, I didn't, I didn't, do, I didn't sell out back in the day. I had so I had some opportunities, let's just say. Presented. Oh, what, what, t t tell us one opportunity where you could have sold out and you, you passed it up. Um, I had a few times very, very prominent figures in Hollywood. Now we're getting into it. Uh, propose, say, listen, if you were my girlfriend, I would make you famous. And I said. Yeah, I, I was like, no, I'm going to do it myself. Mm. And there was girls there, you know, I was working on a job with this guy and he, and there was gals there that were like, what are you doing? Like, he will set you up. You will be famous. Like, why don't you want to date him? And I was like, because I'm not attracted to him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even that whole Harvey Weinstein stuff, like obviously got busted, but think about, about all the people who, did sleep with him like we're just seeing the slice of people who rejected him imagine all the people and he's one of many and this is uh oh, i know i know someone who was i know someone who went to his office in new york city um i read for him and my oh, really? and my agent told me don't make eye contact with him you're going in for the callback you're going for the producer session harvey's gonna yeah. be the don't make eye contact with him i was like what why I didn't yeah. know. I didn't book the part, maybe because I didn't make eye contact with him, but thank goodness. <laughs> well, if you are moderately good looking, and I think it goes for guys too. I think guys also, I mean, I I mean, my hate, I, I was hit on by gay photographers from photographers, uh, but I wasn't proposed like that. Um, I think it's just that you have to navigate the stuff. That's why having a good team around you is really important. Oh, yeah. Uh, people don't really understand how important that is. Like do doing this solo, you're just so naive um, in your 20s. You don't really know. Which is exactly why I'm mentoring these models. If I would have had me, I think that my career would have been even better. Yeah. I, I, I'm happy with my career. I think that- You're just in like a major Disney series. <laughs> I mean, yeah. No, I'm happy. I'm happy. But you know, I have friends that are on like long running TV shows that started out the same time I did. Right. Like I had, so I had friends that we all went different ways. So. Oh, don't get me started. Famous friends are like the bane of my existence just because you just see them all the time. They're like, Jesus yeah. Christ. And you wish them well, but at the same time you were like, why? <laughs> really? Why? You know? I mean, it's look at listen when Athena was born my firstborn I had her at Cedars and right there in Beverly Hills and guess who came to see me the first day that I had her Harvey Weinstein Taylor Sheridan and his wife Nicole mm -hmm. they were friends of mine we were pregnant at the same time his wife and I would meet up for lunch all the time and so he was kind of he was an acting coach we all went to him for like acting for our auditions we coached Taylor Sheridan with, was an acting coach yes he was an he was the acting coach that we were all referred to Nicole and I had the same agent and uh Alex and that's how I met Nicole and that's how Nicole met Taylor he was she was in his acting class and so but you know and then you see them go on and 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 like Jill Wagner who was one of my really good friends we modeled together and then she was with Ashton Kutcher on that um that hidden camera show and and now she's produced a show with Taylor and I'm like again this goes back to like this whole why this whole conversation started why don't I pick up the phone and ask Nicole and Taylor to throw me in on a show throw <laughs> yeah I, can't, I don't feel comfortable doing that well you can always ask me Shaz um and I will 
I'll put you in my my uh, Instagram stories anytime I'll you want. I'll put you in my Instagram stories. No, if I was creating a show, you better believe you would be in it. Anything you want to add, Shas? Wrapping this up. No, I I I think that you should ask though. I'm going to tell other people to go ahead and ask all their friends to help them out. Maybe not say help me out, but like, hey, we should collaborate. When are we gonna do something? Like, just say it like that. Like, so when do we get to do something together and see what happens? Cause if you don't ask, you don't get. And and I'm gonna try and follow that too. That's that's a hard thing for me. Shaz, um, I will talk to you probably in 10 minutes. I'll call you. <laughs> okay. Uh, have a good day, everyone. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.